Welcome to Lab 2 for uh, Intro to Physical Geography. This one's going to be using ArcGIS Pro. Uh, if you are a person with a uh, Windows computer that can actually run Pro. Um, if you have not installed ArcGIS Pro yet, make sure you uh, have made your ArcGIS Online account uh, outlined in Lab 1. And then go to My Esri and download ArcGIS Pro. And then you're going to use your ArcGIS Online login information to actually uh, log in and authorize Pro. So it's, it's not like ArcMap Desktop where you need the special number to authorize it. You just use your AGAL ArcGIS Online login. So you're going to download Pro, um, or sorry, download the lab. That's going to be this lab 2 zip right here. Um, I highly recommend creating a folder uh, specifically for this class on your computer that's easy to get to the desktop is fine um, ignore that mine says pro right here but you know just call your folder jug11 um, so right click new folder call it jug11 and then uh, I recommend putting everything that you download and everything that you do for this class all the work into that folder when you open up the folder that you download uh, for lab 2 it's going to have uh, these three things in it the outline for this lab, um, I've already set up my word, so it, it takes up just a small part of the screen. You might want to do that as well. Uh, it's an outline here that shows what we're going to be doing in this lab, um, but you can keep that open if you want to. And then you've got um, two folders, one that's full of shape files that you read about in the lab uh, notes earlier, hopefully. Uh, here's airports shape file. You can see all the subfiles associated with it. Here's California counties, Cook counties, uh, CSUs, highways, parks. So each one of these uh, states, again, each one of these is a shape file. And to be a complete shape file, you need all these these uh, separate sub items for it. So highways is composed of the uh, the shape, the SBN, the projection, the database file, and so on. Uh, there's also a geodatabase. The geodatabase uh, doesn't look like much. Um, it's just got a bunch of kind of you know seemingly random stuff. That uh, the point is, you cannot read geodatabases outside of a GIS. You can't open shape files outside of a GIS either. But they they kind of seem more clear. Either way, try not to open these too much. Don't mess with them. Don't delete anything. Don't move anything or change anything out of those. All right, to start the lab. Start menu, uh, ArcGIS, ArcGIS Pro. It's going to open up. It may prompt you to log in. If it does, go ahead and use your ArcGIS Online uh, username and password that is associated with our organization. Uh, don't update it. Update it when you're done with the lab. You don't need the update for this, this lab. But once you're done, just open it back up and click update yeah it'll t it'll take a minute who knows um, maybe that doesn't open for you and then if it doesn't have you logged in then it's going to prompt you to log in uh, to start off we're just going to start creating a blank map so map in the middle name it's going to be lab 2 and then like i said before save it in that folder that you made for all of your stuff so in my case, it's going to be Jug11, um, and then I'm just going to call it Lab2 Test, so it's separate. You can call it Lab2. There we go. And so creating a new project, this is uh, ArcPro is going to create a bunch of folders associated and files associated with this project. That's what it does. Um, but file management is very important in GIS, so just start with this basic pathway. creating project. Okay, so if you used desktop last week, you, you've got a brief introduction to it. You, you've done a couple things with it. Um, Arc Pro, if you haven't opened it up, is noticeably different. Um, it is a, uh, they describe it as a ribbon-based program. So this, this up here is called the ribbon. You've got insert. Uh, we don't need that for now. Um, most of the time you're going to be on map, the map button right here. Uh, project is kind of like the Windows thing. It's project stuff. We don't need that right now. Um, you've got your 
new project, open a project, save the project here at the top, um, undo, that's important, redo, that's important too if you undo something too many times, um, and then back to map. Um, default is the explore button. If you're just moving stuff around, you want this explore button clicked. Um, you can also go to XY, you can search for things. Uh, insert is for um, adding data and adding some other things. Analysis, we'll get into that in future labs. View um, is for the, the kind of different uh, tabs and panes on the side. So geoprocessing, we'll do a lot of that this semester. Catalog right here is this one. Um, this is kind of a, a file management tab. Contents is what's in your actual map right here. Uh, Python, we're not going to deal with that. You can some other time. Uh, tasks, I've never clicked that. Reviewer rules, uh, let's not deal with that now either. <laughs> uh, edit. This is super helpful. One of the, the things I like most about Pro is how easy it is to edit data. It's also something you want to watch out for is it's very easy to edit data in Pro. Um, for now, don't touch that at all um, because you can modify your data in ways that you may not mean to without knowing about it. We'll do a lab on editing though. Uh, imagery, this is for raster data. We'll get into that later. And then share, once you're done with your map, this is different ways to uh, export it, share it, print it, get into different formats. Okay, a brief tour. Um, so first off, uh, there's the ribbon, here's the map tab where we're going to be working in this most. First step, uh, change the base map. So um, base map right here, their default, it's uh, Esri's default is this Mercator uh, basic physical map. It's got your continents labeled, physical features, major cities. Uh, Base map, let's go mm, imagery, <laughs> updating it. Cool, so you've got this nice physical satellite view. Uh, if you don't want that, uh, you could do streets. And so these are, these are very easy. Um, Esri keeps them updated for you. Uh, if you're doing imagery, the satellite layer, keep, mind, keep in mind the uh, limits of the resolution. It's pretty good. It's it's pretty close to Google Earth. I think I've reached the limit of the resolution right here. Um, but for most things, it's think of it as like Google Earth, Google Maps. Go back to streets. Okay. Um, there is a couple different ways to get data into Arc Pro. Um, one is with this Add Data right here button. Um, so add data is going to let you add in data from folders. You may have to dig around to find your folder. Uh, maybe you saved it on the desktop, JAG 11 Pro, that's my folder for this lab. Um, lab 2 test, that's where I put my data for this one. And uh, when you start a project, it creates a geodatabase for your data. So notice this one has the same uh, name as the, the project that I just created, but it's empty because there's no data in it. This... Uh, Here's the folder. It's got a geodata, uh, it's got a different geodatabase in it. I might have created that a different time. Okay, this is the one I actually downloaded, lab2 underscore pro. Um, this has uh, our, our, sorry, lab2 underscore using ArcGIS Pro, that's the correct one. This has the shape files that you downloaded and the geodatabase that you downloaded. Here's ge uh, feature classes. Here's shape files. Um, so we're just going to add in counties real quick. All right, and that adds in California counties. Uh, great, okay, we've got it. You can click on them. It tells you which county it is. It's a nice little pop-up. It's even got all the attributes here. Very cool. Here's us, or here's most of us. Um, that's one way to add data. Another way to add data is is if you had data already saved in your lab folders, it would be in these geodatabases that it already created. They're empty, you just saw that they're empty, so there's not gonna be any data there. Um, so let's go back to the add data button since there isn't anything already saved there. And uh, we're gonna add in highways from a 
shape file. Where highways go? There it is. And just to give you something different, adding in from the geo database, let's do uh, parks. And if you want to, with shape files and feature classes, you can uh, click on one thing and do uh, control to add another one, or you can do shift to select everything in between. So there's shift or control, and it allowed both of those in. Great, okay, so we've got those three things. One other way to add data, uh, you can go to portal, and if you're logged in uh, to ArcGIS Online, which you should be, um, you should be able to go to Portal, and it will show all the data that you've created in ArcGIS Online. That's probably empty for you. Uh, if you go to the second one, Groups, right here, uh, you're going to have your Jag 11 Spring 21. There it is, Group. That's probably your only one. And I have added in a Volcanoes layer for you. Um, so you can click on Volcanoes and drag it in. And if your internet connection works, it should add in from ArcGIS Online. Cool, so that's Volcanoes. So we've added data three different ways um, from both shapefiles and feature classes and from the Esri uh, web-based base maps. Cool. All right. So now uh, symbolizing that data, changing the symbols. Um, let's make counties down here, hollow. So just click on the symbol. And this that's easy. It gives you kind of recommended ways to look at it. You've got properties. You could change the, the width of the outline or some other things. Um, you could go color and change the color. Uh, let's go gallery and then just black outline. That's going to make all your counties hollow. Oh, dash? No. It's just normal black outline. 1.0. 2.0 is way too thick. Okay. Uh, highways. Let's have it be a thin gray line. I know it says black on there. Oh, minor road. Let's try that. Mm, no. There we go. The railroad symbol looks good. You can, if you wanted to, you could go properties and color. No, that just tells you what color it is. Oh. There it is. So not the paintbrush, it's the layers tab. Um, and then color, you can change that specifically here. Uh, let's just do point or size one font and then apply. Okay, next let's change parks. So you're gonna click on parks uh, under the map tab. Uh, it should change to appearance right here. And then over on the right side in appearance for parks, uh, you should get this little search bar. And if you type in parks, enter. Zero symbols found, perfect. Okay, just park. There we go, park. Um, and then click on one of these that it recommends. Let's do park, okay. Um, and that changes the symbol. Lastly, for now, uh, let's do volcanoes. Click on that. And it gives you, so um, we've got a polygon, a line. Uh, volcanoes is a point symbol. Let's scroll down. Uh, for some reason, volcanoes, I always make them triangles. Uh, let's do triangle one. And then uh, a color that is a little bit more um, warning, orange. There you go. Okay, that looks like volcanoes. Uh, okay, now we have all these features on here. We don't need the dot s or the underscore shp on here. The couple neat ways to change the names of features on your map. Um, one is to just click twice slowly on them. Okay, so we're on something else. Click on volcanoes. Click again, and it becomes editable. So there we go. And capital V. Now it looks good. Uh, Highway parks. We don't need this to say CA counties or CA counties. Click twice slowly. Maybe just counties. All right. All right. So that'll change the name of your features. We can also, uh, the title of this map is map. Um, we can change that by clicking twice slowly on it. 
and call it uh, lap two. We could also call it uh, the end goal here is going to be uh, something else. Let's go with lap two for now. Um, okay, so we changed the name to features. Great. Now, um, it's kind of messy, but uh, what we ultimately want, uh, the goal for this lab, is going to be for uh, you to create a map of California CSUs. So for CSUs, we don't need volcanoes. We can uncheck that to get rid of it. Uh, maybe you want the airports, leave it on or take it off, whatever. Highways, not a super important thing. Counties, maybe you might want the county information on a CSU map. Um, and then I'm going to put parks underneath counties just to change the drawing order. That looks a little bit bigger. bigger. But um, as a person in a geography class, maybe if you're choosing CSUs to transfer to, proximity to parks could be important for you. Okay, so to do this, uh, we're going to go back to the Map tab. We're going to go back to Add Data. And we're going to choose CSU Campus Location here. Insert that and um, they add in. Let's turn off airports for now just so that symbols aren't confusing. Um, the default point symbol, I have a big problem with it. It's always this dot with a black outline on it. I, I cannot stand it. Um, what I So it's probably like circle three is the default. Circle one does not have an outline, um, but it's always way too big. So what you do, circle one, properties, change it down to, and it gives you a preview down here, not one. There we go. Uh, five point looks okay for this, and then let's get a nice, uh, this is the CSU color, uh, apply, and there they are. And so having that, the removing a black outline from them, I think looks a lot better. Um, okay, so there's CSU campus locations. Um, we can change the name of that again. Uh, let's just call it CSU campus. Get rid of the underscore in our name. Um, we can see if you right click on it, attribute table. Attribute table is going to pop up, unlike in our desktop, it shows up at the bottom here. We can make it bigger, um, but we've got the school names uh, down through here. Uh, that's the 23 campuses, starts at zero, cool. Um, so there's all the school names, there's the 23 CSUs. Uh, so for your map um, that you're going to export, uh, if you want to add labels, you can. That's going to be labeling. I'll let you play around with those on your own. Um, here's the, you're gonna, so you're going to select CSUs, go to the labeling tab up here, and you can add labels, remove labels, do a couple different things. We will do a lab on labels at some point in the future. Um, but let's say that you are done with this and you're ready to uh, get rid of it or uh, <laughs> submit it or print it. Um, we're going to go uh, insert new layout. And that gives you a bunch of pre-made layout styles. Now, because we're showing California, um, just normal letter is OK. Uh, Actually, we can close the attribute table. And this goes into layout view. Uh, you might have noticed in desktop, you've got layout view and data view. Same thing. Uh, here's our new layout. And then when that layout comes in, it's going to be blank because it's a new layout that you added in. Um, so what we want to do, uh, we're going to add the map that we created, this lab 2, into the layout. So everything got set up, it looks nice enough for now. So go over to the layout. Um, just because your tabs probably got messed up, we're gonna click view and reset panes for mapping. That's kind of handy. And so it puts us back with the table of contents on the left, catalog on the right. Um, from there, uh, in the catalog view, uh, do the maps drop down. So this is the maps that we have in our project. And um, it's got the two maps that we, well, I don't know, that one's just blank. It's got the map that we created. Uh, so here's lab two. You can right click and open. You can right click and, or just click on it and drag it in here and it adds that map frame into the uh, layout.
if it loads into your map like this, uh, there's a chance that it'll load in zoomed in on California where we left off. Should load in like that, but if it doesn't, that's okay. You can go layout, uh, activate, and then that activates the data or the map part of your actual layout, and then you can readjust the zoom. There we go. All right. Um, go back over to the map tab. Um, See, so resize it, click map. Um, you can do fix zoom in and it just zooms in a tiny bit. That looks good, all right. Close activated map frame. And all right, so now that we've got nothing selected, the ribbon is blank. Uh, let's go back to layout. Um, one thing if depending on what you're mapping, orientation, Landscape, if you're doing something long, portrait, if you're doing something tall. Uh, California is tall, so keep portrait layout. Uh, time to insert things. Okay, so you're going to want uh, north arrow. So you click north arrow, click on the map, and it adds it in. There you go. Insert. You also want a uh, scale bar. There you go, scale bar. Uh, we'll get into the, the finer points of making those uh, look different ways in a different lab. Uh, generally, that works the same in Pro as it does in Desktop. Insert again, Legend. We're going to click on the map, and we put the legend in. So notice, um, the legend is only showing things that are activated. So it's got CSU campus, counties, parks. Now that it's in the legend, let's call it, change the name of it, call this campus location. Um, and then if you were to add things to the map, they would show up in the legend. And if you remove things, they'll be removed from the legend. Maybe in your college selection, volcano proximity is really important to you. In that case, I guess um, Fresno or uh, Sonoma State might be your way to go. Um, and then, okay, let's keep inserting. We don't need volcanoes. You can have it if you like it. Uh, insert. We're going to do a, um, you could do charts, tables, additional symbols. Um, this is actually a really cool map frame. No, not that one. Oh, that's okay. Um, and then we want text. Uh, for text, we'll just do general text. Click on the map and call it uh, California State. And enter, and it's not typing very well. There we go. Expand the size. Double click on it. It's spelled correctly. And then we want it to be, um, here's text, we want it to be uh, centered, so we're going to do text symbol at the top here, properties, appearance, no, position, and center alignment, and then apply. This is where you can change finer things, uh, you can rotate it at an angle, you don't need to for the title. Give it a halo. Halo is a little background that makes it easier to see. Probably not for the title. Shadow, sure. Uh, comic book things. That's all right. Okay, so title looks, let's make it a tiny bit bigger. And then I think it's pretty good. Way too big. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Close. The might as well also put your name on there. So we're going to go insert again, symbol, uh, scheme two, I like that boundary. And then uh, click here and type your name. You can do made by your name. Make 
be big enough. Made by your name. Uh, and let's put it, usually I'd go right here. I think that's good. You can also put things outside of them at frame. That's a better spot. There we go. Okay. Uh, so that looks good. So then our save button, here's the save the project. Saving project, good. Uh, now what you're gonna do is go to, um, share. So for share, under share you've got a few things. One, if you're just printing it, you can go share layout and it opens up this printer uh, properties. I don't actually have a printer. I think most people these days don't have a printer, but you can print to a PDF and that creates a nice PDF for you to send out. Um, it gives you a preview. Here's what it's going to look like. You could do portrait and, or sorry, landscape. And because we didn't set our page up as landscape ahead of time, then it's going to print bad. So don't do that. Make sure you do the one that makes sense. Portrait, uh, not black and white because it's PDF, but I guess if you had a black and white printer, that's what you do. Actual size, fit to paper size. If you're printing on a larger size, like on a plotter, I would actually create the layout and in that actual size. Um, output quality, best, yeah, because it's a PDF. You can have a series of maps, which is really cool. We'll probably do that a different time. And then um, print to file, which is what we're doing. So you set the destination there. What we're actually doing is sending a web map. So we're gonna uh, close out, or get away from that. That's fine, close it out. And then go to our lab two pane over here. Um, and then under share for lab two, not the layout, share for that. Um, you're gonna do web map. And when you click web map, it sets you up to share it uh, in an online format. So one really nice thing about Pro is it works really well with ArcGIS Online, which we're gonna do in the next uh, couple labs. So uh, name lab two, CSUs, summary, uh, a simple map of CSU locations, tags, lab two, CSU, uh, lab two, enter, CSU, enter. All right. Uh, configuration, exploratory. If you want people to be able to edit it, you can. Uh, if it's just visualization, great. Um, interactive, exploratory is cool because if you, people can click on it and see what everything means. I think that's the one you want for this one. So let's go exploratory, location, folder. Uh, we're going to create a folder uh, and let's call that your chug 11 labs. And then share with uh, just PCC groups if you want to. You could do just our, you only have one choice. It's our Jug 11 Spring 21. You don't have to share with everybody. And then finish. Analyze. There's a couple problems. Don't worry about those. Share. Oh, he must fix all errors. Slayer, service Slayer has a different... Oh, yeah, that is a problem. That looks much better. If you, I don't know if you had that problem, but um, I think that's a good fix. If you have these other ones, I think they're optional. Let's do share. And it is publishing the web layers. Okay, it eventually finishes, and it says successfully shared web map. Great. Uh, let's click manage web map and see. 
you're going to log in. And there it is. Uh, okay, let's share. Nah. Open in Map Viewer. It's going to open it up on uh, ArcGIS Online. And here is the map that you made. Okay, last step. This is what you're turning in. Um, you're going to go share map again uh, and link to this map. So just highlight that, control C, copy it, or right click, copy. And this is what you're going to paste into Canvas. So on the um, submission, click the submit button, paste that link in, and you are all set. Uh, email me if you have questions. Go to office hours if you have any questions. Uh, and think about what you like better, Arc Pro or Arc Desktop. Um, I'm definitely much more familiar with desktop. I've got 15 years on desktop and uh, one year <laughs> with Arc Pro, but Pro is the future, so um, it makes a lot of sense to, to use it, but it's also helpful to be able to do uh, any of your mapping needs on either of them because whatever GIS job you get, if you're getting a GIS job, uh, you could get some company that's uh, slightly less up to date and is using desktop only, or you could get a job with a company that's using Pro, or a lot of places are actually using both now um, for different reasons. So it's a good idea to be familiar with both Pro and desktop. So here's your introduction to Pro.